Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're gonna to be making clamp handles because these clamps that I recently picked up uh, don't come with the handles. So let's make them out of something incredibly hard and stupid to work with. Red gum from Australia. Let's dive in. This is Australian red gum. It is hard, hard stuff. Not only that, it is also reversing grain. So the grain rotates direction. So no matter which way you plane, you're always going to be planing against the grain. So tear out is uh, definitely a thing. <laughs> it, it's a fun wood. This is sent to me by a, a fan from Australia. He actually sent several blocks of Australian hardwoods. And I've been wanting to play with this for a long time, but haven't had a chance. So this is a small block. That was just enough I can get two handles out of and have a little scrap left over for something else. So we're going to rip it down to size. I want to make the handles about inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter octagonal. And so to do that, we're going to rip it down to a little over an inch and a quarter thick piece. And this is going to mean resawing red gum. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, it actually saws pretty smoothly. Um, because it is so dense, there's less vibration and less chatter from it. The teeth don't sink in quite as far or as fast. So it actually cuts rather smoothly, which is a, a joy. Once we have ripped it down to the dimension, we can then plane it off. This is where I really get the first uh, experience of how hard this is. You really got to have the, the plane blades sharp, and uh, then you've got to resharpen them again rather regularly. We're going to rip it down into squares that are then inch and a quarter, um, so that they are inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter. And from these squares, we can then make our octagonal blanks. So um, once all of the cutting is done, then you can actually do the square up. So I'm cutting off one blank and then smoothing off another side that I can then measure off of because we want to have a nice true edge that I can then put the marking gauge off and run that all the way around and then make the last cut to get my second handle out of this because I need two. Because for some reason, clamps always come in pairs. <laughs> so now we get those off, we can flatten off the, f the faces and then bring them down into perfectly square squares, our, our extruded rectangles, <laughs> our uh, rectangle prisms, I guess, is the actual um, cubic shape, whatever that's called. Red gum. Let's do this. <laughs> we want to make these squares into octagons. So that means taking off all four corners to be the same amount. So it makes it pretty easy because you can put it in the vice corner to corner and then start going at it. I'm actually going to be using a smoothing plane here set a little bit heavier than I normally like for a smoothing plane, but I have the chip breaker pretty close. And even with that, I was still getting some tear out and I would have to go back over with a file in the end um, and a really, really fine setup on the smoothing plane. So I can do the octagonal on all uh, four corners and then I want to actually um, cut this down so that I can fit a, um, a ring around it to protect the splitting on this. So what I did was drew a line um, in a certain depth all the way around and then I drew the circle on the bottom and then I can cut in to that line with the chisel. And because this is reversing grain, some places it went in well and some places it really didn't and um, it kind of went all over the place. But I stayed a long ways away from the line as you can see right there. And then I can come back in with a file and bring it down right to that line. And that way I'm going to get a nice clean surface that this will go around. Uh, because this this wood really split out a lot more than I was expecting. Usually with reversing grain like that, it, it tends to stay together a little bit better. And I'm going to keep going at it until I get it very, very close. I want this to be something that is really pressured down on there. I don't want it to be loose. I don't want it to be something that slides easily. I want it to really... I want to really squeeze it down on there. So once I get it close enough, we're going to take it off. And now we need to drill a hole into the end uh, for the rod to come through. And of course, this has a, uh, a pin going through it. And I want to make sure that that hole is going through at the right spot. And you can see how this doesn't actually go through the center of the rod. So I'm going to use that rod to put it in line. I'm going to have the, the, the rod exactly where it is in the center of the post and then drill through it. And that will give me a hole going all the way through. Then I have an auger bit that I can then bring in that is just the right size. Um, except for at that point I realized, wait a second, this is going to split because they have that snail on there that's going to tear it out. So you clamp it in place so that it's not going to split out on you. Drill your hole down. And now that we have the hole drilled from one side, we can drill through the rod. And this way we can make sure that it is perfectly in line so that pin will go all the way through. 
Um, and unfortunately, I didn't really think about it too much here, but it's splitting out. When I pounded it down like this, I blew out the other side on one of these. Um, and I should have kept the clamp on there so I wouldn't blow out that piece. As you can see here, it's missing. So now we need to file off the pin so that the collar can then fit down over it. And with that in place, we can fit this collar down on. I got really nice and tight. Had to tap it down in there. Ended up having to get a punch. And unfortunately, I couldn't find my punches, so I used an old trash file. Um, yeah, not the best thing to use, but it gets down there. We're going to chamfer off the very edge of this so that we get a nice clean chamfer under there. Speaking of chamfers, let's do it on the other side. Now, the one thing I did like about the red gum is it actually chisel chisels really, really nicely. Um, it's very, very clean, smooth cut, and you can actually um, chamfer the corners with a chisel um, very, very easily. And it was, it was, it was, it was a pleasure to do that. Um, I, I enjoyed that step of it. We can clean up all the edges with a file, uh, make sure that all the surfaces are nice and smooth. Now because I blew out that large chunk, um, and because I wanted to do um, a few things just to hold the pin in place, make sure everything was in, I um, used some epoxy, some Total Boat high performance epoxy on there to let that sit in and fill in all the way around. Once that is cured, we can come in and start doing all the finish detail on it. I'm going to actually file down all the surfaces, smooth it out, and get really nice clean settings on there. Because this is so hard, it does clog up the file very quickly. So you can use a, a, a file card, a card file, to uh, remove all the dirt and uh, wood from it. And then, of course, because this is wood by right, we are going to finish it with boiled linseed oil. And the color on this is just Oh, yes. Um, yeah, this was this is one of my favorite woods now. Um, the, 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 the grain structure and color that come out from that is just beautiful. And yes, it is that red in person. It is a, a gorgeous, gorgeous wood. Now, it will turn far more brown over time, but um, it is, yeah, it's really beautiful. This is my, uh, my paste wax that I sell in my store. And I'm going to use that to finish, put it on there, let it sit on until it hardens up, usually an hour or so, and then come and polish it off, and you get that gorgeous finish. So these are clamp handles for a new pair of clamps that I was recently given. And uh, we did some, uh, some cleanup on them, restored the clamps, and we can put them all back together and give these things a test drive. Uh, these are actually some of my favorite clamps. They're, they're a good style and they, they work really, really well. So once this all goes together, then we have clamps. And I really like these. You can get a lot of torque down those handles. Great all around and I love that red gum. Just gorgeous. So I know, I know, do I really need another set of clamps when I've got all of these over here? And the answer is yes, you can never have enough clamps as my father has ground into me over the years. Clamps are one of those things where you can, you can never have enough. You, you always get them and there's always another project of, oh, I stink, I wish I had more. Um, and I've got a table build coming up where I'm going to need even more of these. So yes, these will come in very useful and you'll see them quite a bit. It was kind of fun to work with red gum. Uh, this is the first time I've had a chance to do that. It is a very dense wood, switching grain. It was, it was incredibly fun to work with. I, I really enjoyed it. And the color on it is just gorgeous. I'm really happy with how these came out. Um, the red gum was actually sent to me by a, a viewer in Australia and I'm loving it. So uh, the collars are part of the burnisher kits that I sell. Um, so if you'd like to see those, um, I do have them on my website. But these are a lot of fun. Looking forward to using them quite a bit. If you do have any questions, comments, or ideas, let me know those down below. Also, I want to say thank you to all the patrons on Patreon, people who have supplied me with things and, and helped me out, and uh, this is absolutely phenomenal. Thank you for that. Everyone who is scrolling over here on the side is quite literally keeping the lights on and keeping these videos coming. If you'd like to find out more about that, there's a link to Patreon down below, or you can click that little join button and help support the channel directly. So I think that'll about do it for now, and until next time, have a wonderful day. If you're happy and you know it, clamp your hands. Ow, ow!